C2 month rolls on with my fact list for this character. I'm aware that everyone and their mother has already made one, but I still want to share my own. My main motivation was actually CBR, since their attempts at making a fact list were so bad. I say attempts because they actually made two fact lists for C2. My immediate thoughts after reading their first was, hey, I could do way better than this. And thus, my C2 fact list was made. I even put 20 things instead of 10, and each one something that CBR surprisingly forgot. That article has been out for a while now, and here, finally, you get the video version. I decided for this video version, though, to only have 10 facts instead of 20. Just like my other videos on different characters, expect spoilers. In particular, there will be massive spoilers on the original series and the new recap films plus Lelouch of the Resurrection. And the facts on this list are in no particular order. Not all tasks have been cleared. Here are 10 facts about C2. Number 10. C2 is the first and last character we see in Code Geass. I am, of course, referring to the original series. Everyone is aware of the last scene in Code Geass where C2 monologue closes out the series. But did you know that C2 is also the first character we see at the start of R1 and R2? Watch the beginning of Code Geass R1 again, and you will first see her eye, then her whole body, as she watches Lelouch and Suzaku as children. I think it's an excellent writing that the character who starts Lelouch on his path is also the one that starts our path into Kogias. Number 9. C2 marries Lelouch at the end of Lelouch of the Resurrection. I only learned about this through the wiki, where it states by C2's info box in the Alternative Universe section that she is Lelouch's husband. Now, sometimes the wiki just lists things with no evidence to back it up. But when I watched the ending of Lelouch of the Resurrection, it became clear. Lelouch and C2 are wearing those black outfits because it was for their wedding. And the black makes sense since it's a union between a witch and a warlock. Lelouch and C2 became a couple in the alternative universe, which still means that any ship from the original series is still valid. C2 times Lelouch fans are happy, as well as everyone who supports the other ships. So it's a win-win for everyone. Number 8. C2 was V2's predecessor of the Gios Order. Now, C2 was only a figurehead with no actual power, but this was important because it explained her knowledge on Gios and her early dealings with the royal family. Lelouch asked C2 to help him find the Gios Order using her knowledge as its former leader. This eventually led to C2 to partake in the destruction of the Gios Order by killing her former allies. It's one of the most controversial parts of the story, and this piece of information gives a more context to why assisting Lelouch in the destruction of the Order was hard for C2. And it's through those actions that C2 shows her loyalty to Lelouch. Number 7. C2's monologue at the end of R2 had the fan base speculating for years. At the end of R2, fans were wondering, did Lelouch die or was he the one driving the horse cart at the end of R2? The reason for this was with C2's last words to close the series. Right, Lelouch? Since we know that C2 could communicate with Marianne through telepathy, fans thought she might have been talking to Lelouch in C's world through the same method. Or maybe if Lelouch got Charles' code, then he became immortal and therefore was the one driving the cart. We now know from the ending of the original R2 recap film that Lelouch indeed died at the end of Code Geass. The alternative universe was created to bring him back. But despite getting an answer, this was and continues to be a highly discussed topic in the anime community with people constantly throwing out their new theories, and they're always fun to read. Number 6. C2 has the most unique hairstyles and outfits in the entire series. You may have never noticed this, but C2 wears so many different outfits in Code Geass. She even complements them with her different hairstyles. I went through the whole series and actually counted 16, at least 16 different outfits and five different hairstyles. My favorite outfits include her white outfit that she wears at the end of R1 and at the start of R2, the black knight outfit, her school uniform, and the one she wore when confronting Mao in the amusement park. My favorite hairstyle is her classic straight design that she has when wearing the Zero outfit or her prison clothes. Let me know in the comments which outfit and hairstyle is your favorite. Not the most important to the story, but something I found interesting and fun to watch as you go through the series. Number 5. C2 is one of the best Nightmare Frame pilots in Code Geass. C2 has lived a long time, and we can see that she knows hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as how to fire a gun. But what impresses me is her ability to pilot different Nightmare Frames. 
She learned how in a small amount of time. In stage 19, Tamaki asked her to start training in a nightmare frame. And by stage 20, we already see her piloting the Gaywin as Lou sits in the passenger seat. Which impresses me in and of itself because the Gaywin is not an easy nightmare to use, like the Sutherland, for example. I mentioned she pilots different nightmare frames. They are the Borai, the Katsuki, the Gaywin, and the Lancelot Frontier. And the get go in and the Lucha of the Resurrection. And I want to add that she's quite proficient with these nightmare frames. Her skills are equal, if not better, than members of the Holy Swords, and only a touch worse than Suzaku or Colin. Many people discuss C2's immortality and her knowledge as important parts of her character, but not many discuss her excellent abilities as a nightmare frame pilot. Number 4. C2 saves Lelouch's life many times in Code Geass. Let's admit it, without C2, Lelouch would have been screwed in Code Geass. In fact, let's go over the main times where C2 saves Lelouch's hide. C2 took a bullet for Lelouch in the beginning of Code Geass, which led to her giving him Geass in the first place. And this contract, of course, is what Lelouch used to save his life from all those Britannian soldiers. She dressed as Zero so Cornelia could not catch Lelouch in one of the Sutherlands in Stage 9. Before Suzaku could bring Lelouch in, C2 stepped in to save Lelouch by feeding Suzaku images of his life. C2 saved both Lelouch and Shirley by setting the trolley down when Ma went back inside. C2 sacrificed herself to stop Jeremiah in Stage 25. C2 restored Lucia's memories in turn 1 so he could stop the men that were pursuing him. And of course continue his goals to destroy Britannia. She helped Lelouch escape the Thought Elevator in turn 15. And finally, she saved Lelouch from Colin in turn 24. Just more proof of how C2 was very important to the plot of Kogias and how none of this would have happened without her. Number 3. She is one of the only characters that can match Lelouch's intelligence. You can count on one hand the number of characters that actually outsmart Lelouch in the series. They are Cornelia, Schneisel, Valletta, Shinke, and of course, C2. I don't count Mao because he only outsmarted Lelouch because of his Gias, and even then he still lost to Lelouch twice. But back to C2. She is very good at this. She always is able to challenge him and his plans, and they have deep conversations. Her sharp wit can go toe-to-toe with Lelouch, and many times she gets the best of him. Lelouch respects her insights so much, he actually consults her often about what his next move should be. I think her intelligence is one of the reasons why I believe Lelouch loves her over Shirley and Colin. Number 2. C2 was committed to being with Lelouch until the very end. C2 has told Lelouch many times that they are accomplices, and therefore she will be with him until the very end. Early on, she meant by fulfilling her contract, but as the series progressed, this actually became a commitment for life, as she was going to be there for Lelouch until the very end. She demonstrated this by staying with Lelouch during the Zero Requiem, even though by that time, her contract was never going to be fulfilled, and the Ragnarok connection ended in failure. My favorite example, though, is in Lelouch of the Resurrection, where C2 was taking care of Lelouch despite him being mentally handicapped and a shell of what he once was. C2 told Colin about her vow, and no matter what state he is in, she will always be with him. Obviously, she was hoping to find a way to restore Lelouch's mind. This is one of my favorite things about C2, and could possibly be her best quality. Number 1. C2 is a bullet sponge. Since C2 is immortal, we see many scenes that put that to the test. The most frequent one being scenes of her being shot. Even though she's immortal, it's always hard to watch her get shot repeatedly by different people. As Lelouch said in the film Lelouch of the Resurrection, even though you can't die, it does not mean that your pain is any less of a sacrifice. Three biggest examples of C2 getting shot stand out to me. When Mao shoots her in Clovisland, when several of Bitter's men shoot C2, and in that scene, it was reminiscent of actually the one I just mentioned before, when Mao shoots her, and the biggest, of course, is in stage one, where she takes a bullet for Lelouch, and that's where it all started. Fun fact, in Lelouch of the Resurrection, in the first encounter with the enemy, C2 is first shot in the head, and then in the second encounter, she was shot in the chest. In R1 stage one, she was shot in the head, and in R2 turn one, she was shot in the heart. Obviously, they were referencing that in the film. Something really strange and probably something you never noticed. So just like Colin's fan service, C2's immortality being put to the test is just something we are used to seeing in Code Geass. Since you stayed to the end, here is one more bonus fact, and that is C2 kissed Lelouch twice. 
You did not think we were going to end this list with that depressing fact, did you? Hey, unlike CBR, I would rather give you guys an extra fact than shortchange you what I originally promised. This fact is a better one anyways. C2 kissed Lelouch twice in Kogias, in stage 25 before dropping him off to fight Jeremiah, and in turn 1 to help Lelouch regain his memories. These are some of my favorite moments in Kogias, and I'm sure even more so for Lelouch. And that's the end of the video. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. I have more Kogias articles on my blog, and if you're too impatient to wait for videos, then please check that out. Also, please download my anime streaming guide. I have new updates coming next month, and I got a lot of plans for it, so, so it's something you're not going to want to miss. If you want more Kogias facts or other character analysis videos, please let me know in the comment section below. But now I ask you, what is your favorite fact on C2? Thanks for watching and have a great day.